So as, as this workaround to get this connected directly to the API, and not that there's an issue of connecting to an API, it's just the amount of data that is that is coming through. Uh, if I go into Power Query, uh, what I've done is I've built what's called a parameter. So a parameter here, if you, if you haven't used it in Power BI before, you have a button here that is called Manage Parameters. So in Manage Parameters, uh, there's a few options here. You can create a parameter, and I will do that in my demo. Um, but I'll just edit the existing one. Um, I can just set a number here. So here I have 10, I can say 20, um, and that's all it is. It's just, it just, it's like a variable. You just hold that particular value. Um, and now when I go into the data here, you can see I have 20 records of data. Um, if we go into the advanced editor for the code, um, what I'm doing is I'm calling number of rows. So in here, I do a keep first rows. And instead of that being a text 20, I call my parameter called number of rows. So the value for this parameter number of rows is 20 at the moment. You can see that's 20. And now if I go in here and I say 10, and I go back to that table, it's gonna load it again, it's connecting to the API, and you can see now there's only 10. So this, this workaround allowed me as a Power BI developer to just bring in 10 records of data um, for all the sensors, build out the Power BI report. Once the Power BI report was built in desktop, it only had 10 rows per sensor, uh, which is not very helpful. So what we do is when we bring it into the Power BI service, if I go to the workspace here, you can see here, so this is just my, my version of that particular report. I can go on the data set, and when I schedule here, so in terms of we talked about, someone mentioned the pro licenses, all the refreshing is scheduled in here, uh, but here I have my parameter. So you can see now I've just put a very large number. So Power BI Desktop has an issue with bringing in a certain amount of data from an API. Power BI Service doesn't have the same issue. So what I was able to do is here in the parameters, it's just grabbing everything, where in Power BI Desktop, I just limited it to give me a, give me the top 10 rows. I'll build out my Power BI report. I publish it to the service. Once it's in the service, I change the parameters and then it goes, when it refreshes, it grabs everything. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demo this in terms of how two, two ways you can use parameter in my, in my demo file. So open up my demo file here. Uh, what we'll do here is I'll go into Power Query. Um, and so I just have some accident data. This is the data that I, I use in all my training courses. So um, Victorian accidents. Um, so I don't destroy that. I'm just gonna duplicate this one. So I have another copy of it. Um, so this particular data, if I have a look here, it's coming from, that's my path. It's coming from accident underscore one dot CSV file. So that's the name of the file. Uh, I wanna change this to go to accident two. Now I could manually write in here and delete it and put accident two, but if this CSV file is gonna change and there's different versions, maybe your version controlling or something like that, um, I just wanna create a parameter and this will call the parameter. So if I go manage parameters, new parameter, this one, I will call it, um, actually I'll call it file name. And it will be a text and the file name will be accident underscore two dot, I think it was a CSV file, CSV file. So that value is stored in this parameter. And you can, you can see it there. Now, when I go to accident, what we can do is when I go to the source step up in here, so here's my code accident one underscore, uh, what I can do is get rid of this CSV file so that it ends there. And then I can use the and, sorry, let me zoom in so you can see that. Oh, I can't, all right, I'll zoom in at the end. And, and then I will call my parameter. So you can see here, this is the parameter that I've created called file name. Oops. File name. Just return that. Um, so 
once that's in there, I just need the and signed and it, it, it appends it on. And now I can go into here. Now there is no accident three. So if I go accident three and go back to my report, it should fall over. So you can see the path it says couldn't find the path. C uses blah, 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 accident three. So now I can use this parameter um, instead of manually going into my code. And obviously if I had different queries all pointing to the same CSV file, um, I only have to change it once in the parameter. Um, so it's meant for reusing things. So I want to reuse the changing the file name. So let's do another example where now for this one, I just want to see the top 10. Uh, so I will go keep rows. I'm going to keep my top rows and I just want to keep the top 10 rows here. So you can see now I have 10. And if I have a look in the code, I've done a filter. I want to see the top 10 rows. Let's create another parameter. New parameter. Uh, this one I'm going to call, I'll just call it count. And I'll just leave it as any, but let's make the value 20. So you can see this parameter, all, it's just a number. Now, when I go over here to my code, instead of this 10 in here, I refer to the parameter name, which is count. Now, this 10 should change to 20 as soon as I click and return on that. And you can see now I get 20. Now, we could also, instead of hard coding it, uh, we can use a query. So you can see in here my suggested values. Now, I could hard code the values in here. So I could say 1 to 20, or I can call a query. I've got a query here, which is actually a list of numbers. So here I can reference the query list of numbers, give the current value 1, click on OK. So you can see now I get 1. Now how do we use this in the world of Power BI? When I click close and apply, it's all going to load. Here, transform data. And this is where we can edit the parameters. So this is good, you know, if you want to do testing, you know, I don't want to bring in a million rows of data into Power BI Desktop. Uh, you can see here now I have a list. So how many rows of data do I want to bring in? Do I want to change the file name? Or from Power BI Desktop, I can modify my parameters. Also in Power BI Service, I can modify the parameters once I've once I've published it up. Um, so parameters are, you know, there's a text or there's a number that I want to reuse in my code, uh, kind of like a variable, and I can manage it in the front end of Power BI or the Power BI Service. So in terms of this use case, uh, the API was pulling too much data and, and I couldn't build anything with it. So I had to limit it so that I could build out the report, publish it to the service, and then change the parameter so it brings in the rest of the data. So any questions about that? Uh, Tim, can parameter values be passed via part of a URL of the report service? Can parameter values be passed via and as part of a URL? Um, I, I would say so if I understand the question correctly. It's, it's just a text string. Um, so you could put it within a URL if, you know, the last part of the URL is changing. Um, so, yeah, if you wanted to, a web connector, for example, um, yes, you could. So just with the and sign, you can you can add it in and at the start and at the end if it's, if it's mid. Uh, Fernando says, can I call a stored procedure from Power BI and use the parameters to append as the SP variables? Uh, do you want to elaborate a bit on that question? I'm not sure. What's what's the SP variable? Amanda? Oh, stored procedure. Thanks. Um, can I call stored procedure from Power BI? You can. Now, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I made this list, right? Um, so this particular list of numbers, 
I pulled as the results of a query. Um, so if you ever want to make a list of numbers, so you know if you had maybe a, some a list of stored procedure names or something within a database, um, to do that, all I did was so let's say day of the week, I've grabbed that column and I added as a new query. And then all I want to do is remove the duplicates. So there's all the days of the week. Um, so obviously, if the data is somewhere, then you can call it into Power BI. You can then make that um, a list. When it, so a list is just a one column table, and then that list can be the the attributes within the parameter. I'm happy to, happy to take that question offline if that doesn't make sense. But yeah, if if that the data labels or whatever you want to use in your parameter is in a stored procedure, it's in a table, you can call it out and then make it into a list. Any other questions? No? Okay, excellent. Um, so that's me. Oh, and I've got, so I've done the draw in the background. Um, I did a random generator in Excel and Bianca Slark. Congratulations. Uh, please shoot me an email, um, send me an address, and I will I'll post that off to you this week. So congratulations on that. Um, again, get in touch if you do need support in terms of Power BI, um, training, rollout, development, all that type of stuff. But thanks so much for attending. Um, if you have any questions, drop just drop hang on the line happy to answer any other questions but thanks for a session thank you for our presenters some really interesting presentations um, we've got some more in june so i'd love to see you back but thanks everyone hope you enjoyed the session and i'll see you next time <laughs>